Minimum wage being bumped up to 1010. Is this biblical? Today on Coffee with Conrad. Winning. What's inspiring me to discuss this, because it doesn't sound like it's a very biblical thing, but um, yeah, you know what, there is. There's some stuff we can talk about biblically. First off, I want to talk about some of my personal experience. We all know that the president's come on board, and he's like, uh, let's raise the minimum wage. It's time for America to receive a pay increase. Okay, well, why not just print money and give it back to everybody? You know, kind of like what you're doing with the stimulus. I don't know. Just, I don't know. Some of the solutions don't seem to make sense to me. So when I was a kid, minimum wage was $3.25. I did janitorial work. And, you know, one of the things I figured out is, hey, I need to make a little bit more money than three twenty-five. You know, I'm a teenager. So I started mowing lawns. You know, uh, necessity is the mother of invention. I started figuring out how to make a couple of bucks, throwing hay on the back of trailers. You can make a lot of money doing that as a kid. And um, anyway, when I was a, a business owner, if people were not, <laughs> you do a mathematical formula, you've got to show a profit. If you don't show a profit, your shareholders or whatever, they're going to bail. It's about making a profit. So if someone wasn't meeting their quota, they were fired. It's that simple. So um, when minimum wage is raised, you know, and it's naturally raised, like in Los Angeles, you've got to make a lot of money to survive. There were a lot of hustlers there. Um, they They just knew how to hustle. They were more greedy. And it would increase the wages in the area. You didn't need a law. <laughs> you didn't need a law for this. If people were not um, cutting it, they were fired. Okay? Now, um, people are suffering now because of this. Um, there's something about 50% you have to pay um, time and a half for over 40 hours a week or something like that. So, and plus something about health care. I'm not really sure. I don't keep up with all the politics, but I know people that no longer work full time because people don't want to pay their health insurance and people don't want to pay this overtime thing. So now we have this minimum wage hike. I'm like, wow, it's like America's trying to destroy itself. Um, if you need to hire a let's say a virtual secretary or something, you think, well, you know, I need, I need someone just part-time to do my work. And, you know, the minimum wage is 10 bucks. Let's see if I can get somebody online. Well, you'll find people from the Philippines that are willing to do that work for $5 an hour. Same work. So when you raise the minimum wage here, you're basically going, hey, China, you want some jobs? <laughs> you're out. People are going to outsource. Did you see the movie Outsourcing? Tell, you know, when you, you know now... When you call in for customer service, people are trying to save some money, so they're outsourcing. So when you do stuff like this, you are um, pushing jobs overseas. Now it's going to require a person won't have health care. They can't get time and a half, and so they're going to have to work two part-time jobs just to make ends meet. And if they do not produce enough work for 1010, they will lose their job because if you if you like you know let, let's just let's just make this simple you want to solve the problem you want to solve the problem with this type of thinking why not pay everyone fifty dollars an hour why not increase the wage for everyone fifty dollars an hour because you're going to raise <laughs> you're going to raise the price of the price of the end product 
is going to go up. Plus, your money is going to become cheaper. Your money, your dollar bill, supposed used to represent gold. I mean, it's a big, it's it's a big scam. Um, when you think about it, you know, just just measure and adjust weight is the thing that the God that God the Bible um, desires. There's a scripture that says, you know, he hates unjust weights. And what's happening is with banking, you know, they used to have like a an ounce of gold and you'd give them a piece of paper, an IOU, and they would come in and it would be a gold certificate. They'd come in and get their piece of gold. Well, the bankers found out, you know, hey, you know, I can print about 10 of these pieces of paper and not tell anybody. <laughs> and then all of a sudden, when there's a run on the bank, there was only a fine amount of gold in the bank. So that's why it didn't work. So you go, hmm, hmm, something's not right here. So, you know, when you, when you raise the minimum wage, what's happening here is that in a democracy, um, people are learning, and this is the beginning of a downfall of a nation, they're learning that they can vote money out of someone else's pocket. Now, in the Bible... That's called stealing. When a larger group of people decide to take money from a smaller group of people or a minority, what is that? That's called stealing. So let's, let's address the article here. And I know, you know, I know that people need to make ends meet. Trust me, I know this. You know, I, I do know this. But as a Christian... One of the things that we wrestle with is we can't, uh, you know, the love of money is the root of all evil. We can't serve God and mammon. And mammon is something that perpetuates the survival of the flesh. Um, and that's what we're worried about. Jesus says, don't, don't worry about the person that can kill your body. You know, worry about the one that can take your body and soul and throw them both into hell. So anyway, I found this on Click to Houston, Jennifer Liberto, April 7th, Maryland raises minimum wage to 1010. Um... In this article, be on Conrad Rock's CNN Money, uh, Conrad Rock's April 10th. The state legislator on Monday approved a bill that raises the wage floor from 725 to 1010 by 2018. Governor Martin O'Malley is expected to sign into law. The hike in hourly wages will be made gradually, edging up to $8 an hour on January 1st, 2015. See, they understand that if you hiked it immediately... It, it would freak out, but you're still going to have ripple repercussions, you know, it's just, this is obvious, your McDonald's burger is going to go up in price, I mean, you know, this is just, this is what's going to happen, and people are going to lose their jobs, if they don't perform, you're out of here, that's what's going to happen, after that, it goes up to 50 cent increments in 2016, 2017, it hits 1010 on July 1st, 2018, the move makes Maryland the second state in a month to match congressional Democrats seats Democrats, it's a political thing, Basically, what they're doing is they're securing their seats in Congress. I mean, it's a political move. Uh, when I was a kid, you know, my, my grandparents were Democrats, and they're like, Conrad, the Democrats are for the small people. Well, that's what's happening. And I'm not political either way. I'm not the two parties. Mm -mm, I'm not a part of that. <laughs> I'm a Christian. But I do know stealing when I see it. When, when a mob of people decides to take you know, money from a smaller group of people, that's theft. Anyway, um, Congressional Democrats' proposal to raise federal minimum wage to 1010, which has become one of the President Obama's latest battle cries. The President has encouraged mayors, governors, and state legislators not to wait on Congress to adopt a 1010 rate. Um, the Maryland legislature did the right thing for its workers today, the president said in a statement after its passage. He added that Congress should follow Maryland's lead and ensure that no American who works full-time has to raise a family in poverty and that every American who works hard has the opportunity to see, succeed. The Maryland bill exempts restaurants, making less than 400000 annually from paying the new minimum wages. It also exempts tipped restaurant workers like waiters from qualifying for the higher wages and freezes their minimum wages at three sixty three an hour. Wow. A move pushed for by the restaurant industry. So, well, maybe your McDonald's burger won't go up in price, but something else will. Anyway, this article will be on Conrad Rocks, April 10th, the year of our Lord Jesus Christ, 2014. Think about it. 
Well, hello there. This is the Motor Cars from Oklahoma. Just having coffee with Conrad this morning. Hey, I just want to encourage everybody to tune in to ConradRocks.net. Man, the dude has the power of the word, and he rocks. I'm so excited for Jesus Jam. I mean, I really, really am. First of all, just, just everyone coming together and just that worship and being in a park for some reason, it's just, I feel like it's just going to be awesome. And um, my husband, before I found out about Jesus Jam, was just wanting to volunteer with the Wounded Warriors. So, I mean, this was just perfect. This perfect timing. And I know God is just going to show up and show out. Conrad Rocks is supported by its listeners and by its blog readers. That means people just like you. You can support Conrad Rocks by PayPal or by credit card. You'll find the contribution widget conveniently located in the sidebar of ConradRocks.net. If this ministry has touched your life, please prayerfully consider an offering. And remember, Jesus rules. This next segment, I have the honor, the pleasure, the good fortune to interview Jesus Jam Jason from Jesus Jam, Texas. Yeah, I know. I nicknamed him that right here, actually live on the recording. <laughs> he liked it. Yeah, what he's doing, he's doing the sound. He's doing the, um, you know, we may have some video. My gosh, he's multi-talented. He's done video for uh, Pensacola during the Pensacola Revival. He was there, went to their school of ministry. Um, anyway, I'm not going to spoil the whole thing, but uh, here's some behind-the-scenes stuff. You need to know what's going on behind Jesus Jam Texas. So let's take a listen to the interview right now. Jesus Jam Jason. <laughs> <laughs> what's up? Yeah, I mean, I, th I thought, hey, that's a good nickname since you're doing a lot. Wow. Yeah. It's kind of funny. <laughs> so, dude, yeah, you're doing a lot for Jesus Jam. You got the uh, the audio, the sound. What all are you doing? Are you doing the sound, maybe even some hot dogs or something, right? <laughs> yes. Uh, I'm definitely running sound. Um, my church, uh, Fellowship of Praise and Worship, is going to let me uh, borrow all the equipment. I'm going to bring it out there, set it all up, so we can make sure we have nice, nice, good audio. Everybody can hear the music. Everybody can uh, just get in get involved we want to get we want to get the crowd involved in the different music styles that we're having out there and yes i am actually me and my mother uh we have a catering cup that's going to be uh with the hot dogs and and just handing out free hot dogs to everybody because uh who doesn't want free food and i think your catering company is on jesusjamtexas.com website i think we put you on yes there, it is yeah. it is michaels and michaels we're catering for a new air Amen. <laughs> Your sound system rocks too, dude. That's a really good good sound system. Are you going to need any help with that as far as uh... – Possibly. I might need some help with that so I can uh, so I can enjoy a little bit. I mean, even though I'm going to be enjoying the whole time. Uh, but, yes, I uh, uh, if anybody wants to have or wants to help volunteer for like an hour or something just to babysit for a while, um, yeah, they definitely uh, contact you or or um, put a note on uh, com and – if anybody wants to volunteer to help or if anybody just want to have any more equipment they need to volunteer or want to volunteer. How did you get into sound and stuff? You also do video. How did, how did you get started in that? I was born pretty much deaf. And so for me to run sound is a miracle. The I had a great doctor who uh, 
was able to get me hearing again, but we all know the reason why I was hearing that's because of the uh, the ultimate surgeon that we all, you know, that the whole point of this Jesus Jam is. is And uh, so I was born deaf. Now I can hear. Uh, I still have problems with different frequencies, but I'm pretty good at running sound. It's something I picked up. I love music, all kinds of music. I love it, all different styles. And video is just something I picked up at Bible College in uh, Pensacola, Florida. Uh, I went to a Brownsville Revival School of Ministry. It was a Bible college that was birthed out of the Brownsville Revival um, that started in Father's Day of 1995 and went all the way until 2005. There, I learned how to run run camera, uh, edit videos, do stuff like that because I was recording the revival services at night. And then I learned how to be a director, switching from camera to camera. Wow, you must have saw a lot of uh, cool stuff at Pensacola. Yes, it was. There was definitely a bubble. Uh, we call it a bubble because, um, you know, when you're in that bubble, um, it feels like you can do anything. You know, it, 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 it does, you, you don't really go through a lot of hard times. You know, you don't really, you, you're you just constantly in prayer. You're constantly living your walk. You're constantly praying with people. You have people pray for you. You're constantly getting ministered to over and over, 24 hours a day, it seems like sometimes. But then the real test is when you get out that bubble and hit the real world. That's when your faith comes in and you step it out in faith. You know, you have to press through. And that's what these events are for, to bring people together, to encourage one another and, you know, talk about Jesus the whole time and worship him. We're, we're marrying this Jesus Jam Texas event with Wounded Warriors, and we think that's a pretty good, uh, you know, it's a pretty good thing to have at the same time. I mean, we like we want to help the Wounded Warriors because we're so close to Fort Hood. And there's a lot of people, every time I see someone with like a, a veteran's hat or something, I'll go hand them a card or something. And, you know, I'll hear these private stories about how we need Jesus back in the military, man. Do you do you hear stories like that or? I understand that it's very important. I mean, even even the wars from the very beginning of time always had a person there that would help keep the morale up, you know? And, you know, it's just like, I mean, I, I, when you live for Jesus, you know, of course you have fear, but we don't have the fear of dying. We just have a fear of, you know, leaving people behind that we care about. But, uh, I mean, definitely, because, like, now on Fort Hood, they're allowing – Muslims, Buddhists, Islamic, satanic worship. And once we start letting all that in, honestly, Christianity just gets pretty much pushed to the side because Christians are just too scared to stand up and take their rightful place. Christianity is being kind of lowered to every other religion, I guess. That's... And we're definitely not the same as any religions. Our God's real, you know? All right, Jesus, Jam, Jason, thanks for talking to us. Um, yeah, we'll get you a shirt out. We're going to be ordering shirts here pretty soon. And then, oh, what? how was your trip with uh, Sid? It was good. Pastor Sid out from Houston. Um, he's also, him and his daughter come up to perform. I got to I gotta stay with him. He opened his house up for me, and uh, I got to see him doing some ministering. And we just walked around and checked out Baytown, Houston is where they're coming from. And, yeah, they're going to be spectacular. He's on fire. He's so excited. He is very, very excited. Can't wait for them both to come uh, to Jesus Jam. All right, Jason, thanks for taking the time to talk to me, man. I'm going to put this up on the, the show and uh, some of our social media stuff. God bless you, man. All right, man. Be blessed. Hi, this is John with John Shaba House, having coffee with Conrad. Hey, Amen. I like it. That was great. Angels, demons, poltergeists, ghosts, astral projection, telepathy, telekinesis, levitation. In my book, Open Your Eyes, My Supernatural Journey, I discuss many of my supernatural experiences pre and post salvation. I discuss what it takes to see in the kingdom of heaven. Open Your Eyes, My Supernatural Journey is available on Amazon in both paperback and Kindle. My name is Adrian Ybarra, and, and I've, I've only been a Christian since 2009. Well, I was locked up in West Texas. And, and, and it's real corrupt in there, a lot of gambling, and a lot of just the world in there is real bad. All, everything that they cleaned off the streets, they put it in one room. Since I was a little kid, I had been just rebelling. I was 11 years old when my parents were divorced. 
I ended up getting involved in gangs and, and that led to drugs and I didn't have no place to go. Jesus Jam Texas Memorial Day. The blood red moons are back. They're haunting us. They're coming back. John Hagee started it all off, and it's coming up tax day. Yeah. They're not just getting your money. They want your blood. They want your blood red moon. Anyway, um, just so you guys know, um, blood and moon, but not blood red moon, is in the Bible. Just you know, let's, let's take a quick look at it. The reason I'm doing this on my e-sword here, um, I've only searched for, like, uh, let's see, KJV, well, KJV, but anyway, if you look at blood, red, moon, right, and I'm going to come over here to the little search thing, this is on my e-sword, search, it's searching the entire Bible, there are no results, so let's look for blood, moon, Let's search again, and we're going to see that Joel 2, the sun, shall be turned into darkness. Remember the eclipse when Jesus was on the cross? I'm just wondering if you remember that there was darkness for about three hours while Jesus was on the cross there. And the moon into blood before the great and terrible day of the Lord. Now this is quoted in Acts 2.20. Now, just so you guys know, just so you guys know, we're going to kind of look at this in the context a little bit. Um, if we go back in Acts 2.13, this is when the people are talking in tongues, right? And I just want you to know, you just saw that Peter was quoting Joel, right? You just saw that. You just saw it. Others mocking said, these men are full of new wine, Acts 2.13. But Peter, standing up with the eleven, lift up his voice, and he said to them, Ye men of Judea, and all ye that dwell at Jerusalem, be this known to you, and hearken to my words. For as these are not drunken, as you suppose, but it's the third hour of the day. But this is that, in 2.16, this is that, spoken by prophet Joel. And it shall come to pass in the last days. And a lot of people use this verse here. To prove the spiritual gifts are in are in action, but then they deny the the moon and, and the the blood the sun, right? But this is that. Now what did what did he say? This is that. What did he say? This these guys speaking in tongues is that which was spoken by the prophet Joel. And it shall come to pass in the last days, saith God, I will pour out my spirit on upon all flesh. Which last days? Which? Is it the ones where they, they're, they're speaking in tongues? Is it the last days of the Old Covenant there? Maybe, maybe that's it. Maybe we should read these scriptures in context instead of trying to do backflips and make them mean something else. And it shall come to pass in the last days, saith God, I will pour out my Spirit upon all flesh. And your sons and your daughters shall prophesy, and your young men shall see visions, your old men shall dream dreams. And on my servants and on my handmaidens I will pour in those days of my spirit, and they shall prophesy. And I will show wonders in the heaven above and signs in the earth beneath, blood and fire and vapor of smoke. Okay, we know um, Pompeii went off around A.D. 70 or so. Somewhere it's, whenever it was, it was in the first century. The sun shall be turned darkness and the moon into blood before the great notable day of the Lord shall come. And he continues on, it shall come to pass that whosoever shall call upon the name of the Lord shall be saved. So, you know, keep in mind, when we're trying to take, when, when, when Peter's saying, this is that, um, we need to be a little bit more accepting of what Scripture says instead of trying to twist it to mean other things. And a lot of people are doing that. So, let's get to this article uh, about the blood red moon. Blood red moon. Blood, oops, says blood moon. My gosh, it doesn't say red, does it? Because there is no scripture that says blood red moon. But, you know, we know that the moon shall turn into blood. Just something else. Just something else I wanted to throw out there. Because a lot of people go, well, it's a blood red moon. Well, blood moon, April 15, 2014. Up, upcoming lunar eclipse as Christians divided on the end times of Bible prophecy. Now, with all this stuff that's been happening with the blood moons, um, 
apparently when there's a tetrad, when they when they fall on four um, Jewish holy feast days, something big happens in Jewish history. See my earlier show about the blood red moons. Okay, just check them out. I'm not going to reiterate all that one. You just go look it up. Anyway, with the upcoming lunar tetrad falling on Jewish holy days, some Christians have been discussing whether the event is linked to the Bible's end time prophecy. Now notice he just said last days. You know, a lot of people like going, well, they were saying these are the last days now. Well, <laughs> we need to read the Bible in context. All the guys back then have said these last days back then. You know, not these last thousands of years. Anyway, though some Christians strongly believe that this year's blood moon eclipses are linked to passage Joel 2.31 that says the sun will be turned into darkness and the moon into blood before the great and terrible day of the Lord come, other Christians believe that now is not the time for Christ's return. You know, in the other tetrads, Christ didn't return, but they did have major events that affected the Jewish nation. Okay? The Reverend March Hitchcock, Hitchcock, a preacher and biblical prophecy expert in Edmond, Oklahoma, told the Oklahomian that he doesn't believe the eclipses are related to Bible prophecy. Oh, so now we got somebody saying this isn't related to Bible prophecy. I'm curious, aren't you? Hitchcock pointed out that while rare astronomical occurrences can often be read about in the Bible, the upcoming lunar eclipses is not one of them. In his recently released book, Blood, Rooms, My, Blood Moons Rising, Bible Prophecy, Israel and the Four Blood Moons, Hitchcock, who serves as senior pastor of Faith Bible Church, explains his stance on the universe's upcoming event. The Oklahomian reports that Hitchcock began writing his book because many people were asking him whether the blood moons were linked to prophecy. His colleagues were also overwhelmed with questions about the blood moon eclipses. Hitchcock shared the growing interest resembled the fascination people placed on the Mayan calendar into the world prophecy on December 21st, 2012. The difference in the Mayan calendar idea in 2012 was that it really was kind of outside the Christian world. However, Hitchcock stated, this is a prediction. Dude, they, you know, dude, they ran out of space on the calendar. What are you going to do? Just keep printing ad infinitum? Come on, they were Mayans. <laughs> There's a, remember the meme? He ran out of space, and the guy goes, man, that's going to freak somebody out someday. You know, that's that's kind of funny. They ran out of room. I don't know. Anyway, this is a prediction being made by Christian pastors and Christian teachers. The Oklahoma-based pastor example that after examining historical and scriptural information, he believes that the conclusions they draw on this blood moon prophecy of 2014 and 2015 are not valid. And I was kidding about the Mayan calendar running out. I just think it's a funny joke. Okay. Anyway, Hitchcock's book counters another recently written published book by world-renowned preacher and televangelist, Reverend John Hagee, whose bestseller also discusses the upcoming lunar quartet. In Four, Four Blood Moons, Something's About to Change, Hagee, senior pastor of Cornerstone Church in San Antonio, Texas, discussed the point that something important will soon happen involving Israel. Because the blood moons, otherwise known as the lunar eclipses, will take place during the Jewish holy days of Passover, the Feast of Tabernacles, in 2014-2015. Reverend Mark Blitz of El Shaddai Ministries, which is based in Bonnie Lake, Washington, has also lent his voice to the growing debate. He, too, believes that there are ties between the lunar eclipses and Bible prophecy for Israel, the nation of Israel, physical nation. However, Bruce McClure and Deborah Bird, who write for EarthSky.org, believe that it could should come as no surprise that these blood moons would coincide with important Jewish holidays. Nothing that the Jewish calendar is noting that the Jewish calendar is, after all, a lunar calendar. Yeah, they based everything on the, the moon. Um, if I remember correctly, they would have a person swear, you know, if they saw the moon, they would swear before a committee, yeah, and then that's the first day of the month. It's a lunar, it's a lunar calendar, so you see what I'm saying? It's not that far off. Anyway, in any year, it's inevitable that a full moon should fall, on or near the Feast of Passover, the 15th of Nisan, and Tabernacles, 15th of Tishri. Nisan and Tishri are the first and seventh months of the Jewish calendar. Respectively, the site started, stated. It did acknowledge, however, that it is somewhat ironic that three of these four lunar eclipses are not visible, even in part, from Israel. Now, if you get the, um, there is a program called Red Shift. I don't know if it's still around, 
but you could see the sky at any time going back to 10,000, 20,000 somewhat BC, you know, you could see what the sky looked at like from any perspective on earth. So one of the things that's interesting to note is from Jerusalem, the perspective, if, if they're not shown in Jerusalem, we might not consider that to be significant. Anyway, the blood moon debate continues on. What do you think? You can comment on my blog post. April 10th, the year of our Lord Jesus Christ, 2014. Hi, this is Gerald Thomas in New Hebron, Mississippi, and you're listening to Coffee with Conrad on ConradRocks.net. Conrad Rocks is supported by its listeners and by its blog readers. That means people just like you. You can support Conrad Rocks by PayPal or by credit card. You'll find the contribution widget conveniently located in the sidebar of ConradRocks.net. If this ministry has touched your life, please prayerfully consider an offering. And remember, Jesus Jesus rules. here um i'm going to show you what i got what i'm looking at today maryland raises the minimum wage to ten dollars and ten cents political move to get more votes also designed to ruin america <laughs> let's push those jobs overseas let's raise the prices of goods and services let's cheapen our dollar base which is backed by nothing U.S. Navy game changer converting seawater into fuel. Oh my gosh, that rocks. In the next few years, they're going to be able... Now, we know that you can get hydrogen from water. It's just too expensive to do so. You know, um, seawater into fuel. How about the steam engine, right? (laughs) The steam engine for planes. No, that's not what they're talking about. Pretty sure they're talking about converting the... Uh, some type of hydrogen from the water. If they can do that, they can do it with air. I wonder if that affects the um, evaporation content, you know? That's written about in Job, by the way, how the how the Lord does the uh, evaporation. It's pretty cool. Uh, feds deploy snipers, arrest man for filming outside of First Amendment area. That's in Nevada. This guy has some cows that he was letting them graze in Nevada and they're trying to save a turtle so therefore they're using violence to get rid of this man's cows so they can save a desert tortoise yes that's what America's coming to sheriff refuses to enforce unconstitutional gun laws now that's an amazing thing Islam in a nutshell yeah well another innocent man convicted of murder is freed after 25 years in prison I'm sure he didn't have a jury of his peers. Mike Huckabee, not homophobic, but on the right side of the Bible. They're making fun of him for doing that. Religion as a cloak for discrimination. In other words, you know, people are using like Hobby Lobby. A lot of people are saying, hey, you know, I'm not going to cook a cake for a gay wedding because it's against my religion. So now what they're doing is they're using Bible thumpers. They're calling us homophobic and basically crazy. Former Mars Hill church leaders apologize for being part of structures. They're taking down their teachings. Westboro Baptist Church has run out of Oklahoma, so Oklahoma did something right, apparently. (laughs) I don't know what it's for. 
But Westboro, you know, no matter what their motivation is, they're not showing love when they do things. China is more interested in Jesus than communism. Hmm, pretty interesting. Uh, Blood Moon, April 15th. We talked about that. Upcoming lunar eclipse has Christians divided. Well, it's not just the eclipse that divides Christians, people. It's pretty much everything. That's why we have 20-some-odd thousand denominations. We're not one as Jesus prayed. Now, here's what I'm going to read, and then I'm going to let you go. ACL, you, the Anti-Christian Liberties Union. <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> I just had to say that. ACLU defends student barred from reading Bible during after-school program. Fox News Insider, foxnewsinsider.com, April 8, 2014. The American Civil Liberties Union. Oh, I thought it was the Antichrist Liberty Union. But it's in this case, it's the American Civil Liberty You never know with these people. Came to the defense of a nine-year-old boy who was reportedly told he couldn't read the Bible during an after-school program. Austin Grayson attends the Cannon County Reach program in Tennessee. It was there that Grayson was told to put his Bible away because he wasn't allowed to read religious material. Wait a minute. Who on earth isn't allowed to read the Bible? What? I mean, that's just lunacy. This whole separation of church and state thing has gone too far. You can't read the Bible on your own time? Man, you know, some of you guys, you're just nuts. This is just crazy. And you're going to attack a nine-year-old. His mother, Lisa Kopfkin, said her son recited the First Amendment back to the staff. People, your kids need to know the Bill of Rights. It want, It can fit on a plan card. Amen. Buy the metal kind and hand it to the TSA as you go through the metal detector and they'll go, what's that? Oh, I'm sorry. It's just my rights. Amen. <laughs> they reportedly told Kofkin that the policy stems from the fact the program is funded by public money. Whatever. It's your own time. In Grayson's defense, the ACLU argued that public school students cannot be denied the right to engage in religious activities during designated designated student activity times, recess, or other free time. Union officials said the letter was circulated among REACH staff members. Kupfkin said, I'm so thankful that the law has been clarified not only for REACH, but for everyone that this story has touched. People, the Bill of Rights, come on, get familiar with it. You got, if you don't stand up for the rights, you're, they're going to be taken away. See, they're trying to take it away. If he didn't know the First Amendment, he would have put his Bible down. Amen? Know your rights. They're not granted by the Bill of Rights. They're enshrined. They're ordained by God. They're God-given unalienable rights, which means only God can alienate that right from us. Amen? All right, guys. Thank you for being with me today. Remember, JesusJamTexas.com. And also, you have these contributions. You need some. ConradRocks.net over there in the sidebar. People like you support this online ministry. Um, see you tomorrow. Till we meet again, dig deeper. Go. Higher.